Good morning. My name is Cliff Edson. I'm uh, Calaveras County uh, Board of Supervisors Chair. And uh, I want to thank everybody for coming here to respond to the fire that um, our county has been experiencing for the past two weeks. Um, I have uh, many uh, people and uh, agencies to uh, thank. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank our community. for stepping up and taking care of each other. Um, we've had a wonderful response from uh, the agencies in the area, including CAL FIRE. Uh, FEMA is now here because of the, of the declaration signed by the president. Uh, pg e has done a phenomenal job. Uh, they've been here less than a week, and I think they've replaced like 850 poles. Uh, OES is here, Cal OES, um, SBA to help us out, uh, help our folks out. Uh, local fire, I've seen uh, our local fire folks working with Cal Fire in their, in their uh, base camp. Our local CHP, thank you very much. You guys had the tough job, uh, along with our Sheriff's Department who did the evacuations and um, I think around 46 other uh, Sheriff's uh, agencies from everywhere in the state. We certainly appreciate that. Um, local uh, uh, churches and charities have stepped up big time uh, to take care of our victims. This, this fire actually happened in the poorest, um, impoverished uh, section of our county. And so uh, it, was, uh, it was definitely uh, a challenge. Um, um, so I'm gonna make this short and sweet. And uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Mark Gilarducci, uh, the director of Cal OES. Um, thank you again for um, helping us out in our little county in this emergency. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Supervisor. <clears throat> Mark Gilarducci, the director of California OES. Um, let me start off by saying, uh, really, our, our continued thoughts and prayers are, are with Calaveras County and the individuals who have uh, been impacted by these fires and, and who have suffered losses. Um, we deal with disasters throughout California and each one of these is personal to us. We are, we in California are partners uh, at our, with all of our counties, our state. And um, uh, w when we approach these, as you saw, uh, with the response to the fire, we do it in a collaborative and collective way bringing together um, cities and counties and state assets. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's one team, one fight. And um, that, that goes on uh, through the recovery process. Uh, we all feel the, uh, the impacts and we are very, very sensitive to making sure that the county uh, and the people of the county uh, get back on their feet as soon as possible. Um, I wanna tell you all that it's, um, uh, these events are not linear. Um, they, they are complex. Uh, this one in particular uh, is complex in its, in, in its scope. Um, and, um, and so it will take time, it will take patience, and it will take effort on the part of everyone uh, to be able to get the county back to where uh, it once was. But we want to, our goal, our objective is to work with the county uh, and, the, and the people of the county uh, to build back stronger and better uh, for the future. Uh, this is a fire-prone community, uh, and we want to make sure that uh, for the future, uh, future uh, fires, there's a, as much mitigation efforts put in place uh, to reduce future impacts of, of uh, fires. We know that um, we've had quite a, quite a summer of fires and uh, throughout California, and uh, uh, we don't believe that, that that kind of thing is going to be slowing anytime soon. Uh, so uh, we want to work with, with everyone to make sure that, um, that we build back stronger and better. Uh, early on, the governor uh, uh, proclaimed a state of emergency um, and um, uh, allocated uh, all state, directed all state agencies uh, to respond, uh, um, and we continue to do that. Uh, he also uh, uh, provided funding through the California Disaster Assistance Act and uh, early on uh, had a great conversation with the president uh, about the impacts of the fires, and then shortly after made an official request 
to the president for a federal disaster declaration. Uh, day before yesterday, that declaration was, uh, was approved. And uh, today we sit here uh, uh, in front of you, uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency is on the ground. Um, they have actually been very much involved with us since the inception of the fire. Early on, because of the magnitude and the severity of the fire, uh, FEMA actually provided a fire management assistance grant uh, to the state of California early on to be able to help provide resources to uh, offset the uh, suppression cost of all the fire assets and emergency managers and law enforcement that were responding to the immediate uh, needs of the fire. They are now here uh, through the federal designation uh, to help us with the overall um, uh, recovery process and most importantly to help individuals uh, recover and help them get through the next um, uh, several months until we can get their houses uh, rebuilt. In addition to FEMA, the Small Business Administration has joined in uh, under that declaration and also is here to help provide uh, uh, loans and assistance to not only individuals, but to businesses who have suffered losses. And we'll hear a little bit about that here in a minute. Uh, lastly, I wanna uh, acknowledge the Red Cross. Um, Red Cross has been uh, uh, working on this incident from the beginning. Uh, they're here for the long run as well and will continue to provide uh, assistance as necessary um, through the duration of the recovery. Uh, so with that, let me um, let me turn it over to uh, Tim Scranton. Tim is the uh, federal coordinating officer appointed by uh, the president um, for this disaster uh, to be the federal lead on coordinating federal uh, disaster recovery operations, and he'll go through some of the programs that are available. Tim. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone, and if I if I may. First, uh, on behalf of the federal family, extend our condolences to the family and friends that uh, uh, have lost one loved ones here in this event, and also to those that are affected. You know, I could see the emotion in the supervisor's face here, and, and I just can't imagine what it's like for those of you to, to try and live through this horrendous event. You know, I, my past life, I was a firefighter for over 30 years, and all I ever wanted to do was help people, and now I get to do that at the federal level. And so I bring that with me with the authorities and the policies uh, that FEMA has to offer. And I'd like to go over some of those that we're going to be able to extend to, to the survivors of this event. One of the things that, you know, as this fire began and we moved people into tents and temporary sheltering, you know, this progression. We need to get them uh, out of those tents into more permanent type uh, apartments or, or hotel rooms or whatever, but also longer term strategies. So we're going to be working uh, with you to provide that rental assistance and some assistance also to replace some of your personal property. Uh, we have some transitional sheltering for immediate help uh, and also we're looking at uh, all sorts of options as we look at the geography and topography of this uh, particular event, maybe even uh, modular type units if that's what's going to be the, the most appropriate to fit your needs. We have what's called case management because we know that this is going to be a long-term recovery for, for those survivors that have been affected. As we talked about going from uh, hotels to apartments to longer-term uh, types of, uh, of uh, uh, living, you know, we want to be able to, to partner with you to help you with that long-term strategy because this is not going to be quick. Also, we're going to provide counts, uh, crisis counseling. One of the things that we need to remember in these types of devastating events is when your home burns up, all of your memories are gone. Your pictures and your videos of the kids and, and all of that is, is no longer in existence. So we want to be there to help you through these very difficult times. And also we can provide legal services to, to assist you. And, and also as we talk about the whole community, I know Brad and some others will probably mention this, let's not forget those with access and functional needs. If there's people out there that have uh, specific needs, we want to go out to them and provide them the same level of assistance that we're providing everybody in this event. So how do we do this? We need your help. We need you to please register at 1-800-621-3362. It's 1-800-621-FEMA. Or you can go to disasterassistance.gov or if you're having any type of social event or there's uh, faith-based organizations that are having services or any type of 
of collaborative event that we can go to. We will bring people to that event and register them right there on the spot. We have iPads. We will do that for you. But we need to get the message out that we want to get you into our system so that we can pro start providing those services that, that we have uh, uh, to give you. So with that, uh, again, please spread the word. It's not about us. It's about helping those that have gone through this, this horrible uh, incident, and we want to provide you the best possible service that we can. Thank you. Could you just mention you're going to be out in the community going out besides the oh, registration? I'm, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, we have what's called disaster assistance teams that are currently uh, on both the, this, the Lake Fire and the Butte Fire that are out uh, uh, canvassing the area, running into the survivors, registering them on the spot. Uh, we also have uh, individual or uh, staff at the local assistance centers where we can register you. Um, and we're also setting up what we're calling area field offices in uh, Lake and Calaveras County where we're going to have our staff out here to be with you, to partner with you, so that the local officials and the uh, individuals can actually go and we can, we can reach out to you with that personal touch to make sure that we provide you the best possible service that we can. Right. Thank you. Good morning, Ken Pimlot, uh, Chief of CAL FIRE, and I just want to emphasize a couple of key points that both Director Gellarducci and Supervisor Edson made. <clears throat> Firefighting and emergency response in California uh, is a unified effort. Uh, no different on this fire and the hundreds of fires around California every year or every week uh, during the peak of the summer, are there hundreds of local government fire departments, federal firefighting agencies, the Forest Service, and CAL FIRE responding to these together, and it was no different here. Uh, we've been mobilizing resources all summer to, to make that firefight happen. Uh, I want to thank all those fire departments and our partners out there. Uh, the firefight's not over. Uh, I think you've heard that plain and clear. Um, California's largest and most damaging fires have occurred in the fall months that we're just entering right now, and we have got to stay vigilant. And something that's key, and we've heard it, you've heard me talk about it, you've heard our partners talk about it, We've got to focus as communities on evacuation planning and heating evacuation orders and making sure we're getting everybody out. I don't need to tell Amador and Calaveras counties how this fire spread. You lived it. These fires this summer are spreading at critical rates. Uh, all we have time to do in the beginning is help get uh, individuals and members and community members out of the way and out of the path of these fires. So everything that we can do uh, as a community and as residents and communicating with each other to heat evacuation warnings and to have our plans in place ahead of time because cal fires are going to occur again. We've got months ahead of us under these critical conditions and we want to make sure that we've done everything to help everybody prepare. So thank you. Good morning. I'm Brad Kaiserman. I'm from the American Red Cross. Um, as horrible as these fires have been, and they have been horrible, what is amazing to me, and for a moment I'd like to focus on, is the, is the resilience of this community, the power of this community. You saw the passion in Supervisor Edson's uh, remarks to you today. This community is going to come back. This community is going to be resilient. What you are going to find in the ashes of this fire is hope. What I learned from the FEMA administrator, Craig Fugate, because a few months ago I used to wear a FEMA shirt like this guy. What I learned from the FEMA administrator is this, and you heard Tim Scranton mention it earlier. It takes a whole community, it takes the whole community, to make a community whole. That's what it's going to take to bring it back again. It's going to take all of the agencies, all levels of government, but it's also going to take the people of the community, volunteers, faith-based groups, um, nonprofits. Red Cross is humbled and, and we're pleased that we can be here to help and work with our partners. Uh, there are so many nonprofits and faith-based organizations that are here to help and more will come to help and we're humbled to be a part of that. Today uh, and in the past week, uh, we will continue to make sure that we are conducting feeding in the community, that we're providing shelter for those who need shelter, that we're providing some direct financial assistance uh, in the immediate aftermath of these horrific fires as a transition or a bridge until FEMA or other agencies, folks have registered with them and they can obtain other assistance. But we will be in your community because we are your community. And we'll be with you because you are, you are hope. And so we will work with you. I really appreciate being here today. 
as sorry as I am for your loss, and I am very sorry, it's horrific, but I am absolutely amazed by what I have seen from this community and its leadership. Thank you very much. So thank you, Supervisor. Thanks. Appreciate it. <coughs> thank you, Mark. Sure. So do I have any, anybody would like to ask questions? None, huh? They covered it pretty good. Well, we have, uh, we've had an amazing outpour of um, um, support from all, actually all over. And uh, we actually had to rent two warehouses for, uh, you know, the clothing and, and the water and uh, all of that that have come. Uh, we have a lot of folks up here that are uh, uh, renters, a lot of elderly folks that, are, that had to make a decision between buying insurance and um, food. So we have a lot of folks that uh, um, don't have insurance that were burned out. And uh, uh, we have a, a couple of uh, 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 accounts set up for that. And uh, what we really need is uh, to, for people to uh, help uh, bolster those accounts. Uh, one of them is the uh, Calaveras County Community Foundation. Um, and. Uh, uh, one is the Common Ground Senior Services, and there are a bunch more, including Red Cross. Um, but uh, um, those are the ones I think that are going to go to help provide funding directly to some of these folks. These these seniors uh, that live up here, um, many of them were kind of trapped uh, in the area because they, you know you get to a certain age and you can't move out and you want to you, know, you can't can't do anything else. And uh, we have a bunch of them. So uh, we want to take care of those folks if we can. Yes, sir. There's a figure that's being tossed around. Uh, they're saying 32 grand going to fire victims from FEMA. Is, is that accurate? So every year, the, uh, the maximum allowable grant is adjusted by Congress. This year, it happens to be set at $32,900. But each individual case is different. And so I, I want everybody to understand that you need to register with FEMA through the 1-800 number, disasterassistance.gov, or, or via live with our personnel. Let's get them into the system. Let's review their particular financial situation, and we will, we will go from there. But, you know, I do have to be upfront with you and very candid that that is the maximum allowable amount that is, that is offered through our particular program. But don't forget, as Brad and others have mentioned, we are a whole community on this, so maybe you can take funds from FEMA and have some, some faith-based organizations or volunteer organizations help you rebuild your home and provide free labor and use your money for the construction costs, what have you. But let's not focus and fixate on a particular dollar amount because there's other opportunities from other uh, organizations that can help you in this rebuilding process. Right, so procedurally, I think we need to understand that we encourage everyone to go through their insurance first so that they can see uh, what is eligible through their particular uh, policy. And then what's not covered under their insurance, that's when we start applying our policies and adjust accordingly to see what each individual then would be eligible for. We can then also refer them uh, to the uh, Small Business Association, which is here today. Uh, they can get low interest uh, uh, loans in order to help with the rebuilding process. And, and sometimes, and I also want people to al also understand, and I would encourage them to, to register with SBA because if they don't meet those qualifications, then it comes back to us for those that are really in, in difficult situations that we might be able to provide even additional monies to them. So it's a, it's a, it's a rather complex and individual process. So for me to give you an average, I don't think would be fair or appropriate, but I can tell you what the congressional limit is, and that's 32,900. Can you, uh, I want you to talk about SBA a little bit. Yeah. Sure. 
I'm Michael Flores. I'm a public information officer with the Small Business Administration. Um, as my counterparts have said, uh, this has been a devastating, life-changing event. You know, today we stand here, and we're not here to talk at you, but we're here to speak with you and help people through the process. Now, the Small Business Administration, um, we realize that this is, is, is devastating. I mean, definitely, definitely devastating. We provide up to $200,000 for homeowners. We provide assistance to renters, up to 40000 and up to two million for businesses to begin to recover. And that's what this is about. This is a community, tight-knit community event. So we encourage people to spread the word, to talk amongst yourself, and know everything that's out there that is available. Now, with the SBA, if you're insured, we will help you to cover what you may not be insured for. If you do not have insurance, we can still assist you. But the key is, don't stand in your own way. And I'll say that one more time, don't stand in your own way. Seek the assistance that's available. You can reach the SBA at 1-800-659-2955. And we'll be here until the end. We'll do everything in our power to assist people. Thank you. Are there any other questions?